Hello and welcome to the video. This is to let you know that I've created a new document to update this one here. This, believe it or not, was produced in July 2014. That's how long we have all been trying to figure this stuff out. This was me mapping all of the frequencies, both for all of the A, B, E and F bands as it was back then. We didn't even have race band and how it all maps. And the idea was this, was that it was going to help pilots who flew with other people make sure that they chose channels and bands that were far enough away from each other that they didn't interfere with each other's FPV signal. Now, this new version that I've brought out here, uh, I've created over the past month or two. And the reason I'm bringing this out is actually text from this gentleman here, uh, Dirty Dog FPV. Now, Dirty Dog was flying with a friend and he was using uh, HD0 with an analog pilot and they were having real problems. And I thought, you know what, I've been thinking myself about having some kind of graphical sticker that could go on the front of the radio box that when we got to the field, could sort it out. And the reason that this is quite useful is that I had a problem the other day where I was at the field, my mate was actually on this channel here. He was on uh, A1. I was flying on F6, which is actually down here. And you can see they're actually quite close to each other. And I couldn't quite figure out why I was having the problem because I assumed, because I didn't have this in front of me, that the A channel, uh, the lowest number, the lowest channel um, in the band A would be over here and it would go that way around, but it's actually backwards. So what I've done is I actually mapped, and I think this is right, um, all of the band A, B, E and F and the race band, but I've also, I think this is right as well, is put the DJI 25 megabit because it it's kind of maps almost to race band, but there's a couple of changes down here. And then the 50 megabit mode, which gives you the three bands and then the HD zero stuff down here at the bottom. HD zero is a bit wacky because it actually has two modes. It has one that's basically race band again, as you can see, and there's also ones um, that will match bands two and four from the fat shark stuff. Uh, you can have either or, which is why it looks like that. But it's very tricky these days, if you particularly if you have digital pilots um, and you have analog pilots at the field to actually get it so that you can fly with friends. So if all you're interested in is getting hold of that chart, the link is down below. If you want to hang around, I'm going to talk about some of the tips and tricks and why this happens, but also some of the ways that you can avoid it and minimize it and hopefully use this chart of the field to get everyone in the air flying and having a whale of a time. So one of the problems that we have with analog and the bands that we have available in the 5.8 gigahertz band to fly FPV is that most of the channels, although it looks slightly different, that all the bands are essentially using the same part of the frequency. Not all of that frequency is available where you may fly and things like auto scan might actually pick up two or three channels that the video transmitter could be set to. And if you're not using a high quality video transmitter, it might be a little bit off from the tune. So one of them might be better than the others. So it gets a little bit complicated in with analog. You also have issues then with di digital systems like the DJI stuff. DJI HD stuff in particular is a bit complicated because it actually has a bi-directional link between the goggles on your head and the stuff up there in the sky. So not only do you have to think about the signals that are coming from the DJI HD quad or plane or whatever down to that pilot and trying to keep out of those way, there's also a transmission coming from the goggles up into the air. You have issues where people power up at the flight line and they kind of dump all over somebody's signal. Some of the cheaper video transmitters, the older ones in particular, when you powered them on, used to burp radio frequency all over the spectrum and upset everybody. Um, and when you change channels as well, they used to uh, just dump a load of RF into the band and everybody would have a little bit of breakup on their signal too. Modern kit is an awful lot better if you're buying decent stuff anyway. Other issues that you can have is that things might be okay closer in. So when the model is at your feet, you might have a nice clear image in your goggles. But as you fly further away, some of the signals that are closer to you, maybe a quad that's closer in or a plane or a DJI pilot or a 
somebody like that that's transmitting might that signal might get louder and louder in comparison to the weak signal as your plane or quad gets further away so you have to kind of be aware of all this and this is part of the reason why it's so complicated so how can you improve the situation? Well, the first thing I would recommend is use good quality kit. Uh, use good quality high-tuned antennas that will give you the best reception. Use good quality VTXs and use good quality receivers as well. Some of the receivers, things like the TBS Fusion, the Rapid Fire, uh, those kind of things are great because they are super duper ones that are actually listening to both antennas at the same time. But most of them these days are pretty good. If you have an antenna that's broken, in the old days we had ones with exposed wire elements, clover leaves, if you remember those. Um, they always used to get smashed to pieces and bent all out of shape when we crashed. And we'd all, let's face it, I've done it as well. You kind of try and just you know, push them back into alignment. You go flying again. And they were never the same after the first crash. Well, you know what? The best thing to do is, luckily, those things don't exist anymore, but the best thing to do would have been to take them off and throw them away. However, we have things like Bacoda antennas. I use a lot of Menace RC stuff here, and it works very, very well. Use good quality kit, and that will make sure that the signal that you're trying to use is the one that's going to be in use and give you the best signal reception between the two. Things like antenna alignment are also very important too. In fact, while well, think about that, I have an entire series called the Antenna Lab series. I'll put a link down below. If you're interested in this stuff in any level of detail, go and check out that series. There's probably 10, 12 videos in there that explains how the antenna stuff works without getting into all the maths uh, in quite a bit of detail. The other thing to do, of course, is to keep your distance. You also have other things that go on at the field too. You have something called harmonics, and that means that the signal that's being sent from the transmitter on the model down to the goggles isn't just transmitting at that particular frequency the 5.805 gigahertz or whatever it is you've set it to it's there's actually what's called harmonics or kind of like little ripples that are in different parts of the band as well and that's why having them far enough away those little ripples aren't going to overlap into your signal and cause you a problem other weird things happen as well. You have things like IMD, and that's where the signals in the air combine and actually create additional frequencies that can cause problems. So it's not always as easy as just making sure you're on different numbers on the bands, particularly with things like harmonics, because the way some of the older bands were divided is that the divisions between all the channels, channels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., are equidistant apart. And that is terrible for things like harmonics, because the harmonics are usually uh, divisible of the frequency, which usually tends to put them slap bang over the top of those other channels. Again, I'm not going to get too much into that, check the Antenna Lab series, but you've got a whole load of stuff going on. The other thing you have to contend with is with things like the digital systems. The digital systems do need a little bit more of the bandwidth to get the digital HD stuff down. In analog, we're only using 4, 6, 640 by 480. It's a VGA frame, essentially. And then you have the HD systems running at 720p or even 1080p, sometimes up to 60 frames a second. And they need to use more of the bandwidth to cram all that stuff down. And that is why on the diagram, you can see in 50 megabits mode for the DJI, there's only three bands and they actually use quite a bit more of the frequencies as well. So you do need to kind of make sure that you're picking bands far enough, bands and channels are far enough away from each other so you don't have that problem. So the big tips to get around this is obviously, hopefully this little thing is that you can print it out, put it in the bag when you go to the field. It'll help you if you ever bump into this kind of problem. If you don't fly with other people, you know what? You'd probably never even worry about this. But for those of us that do, occasionally you go to the field and someone else is running a slightly odd band or channel. It'll help you figure it out, particularly if you're flying with digital stuff. I would recommend use high quality gear. Make sure there is enough separation. You need at least 37 megahertz, I would recommend between each of the analog pieces and if somebody's using some digital stuff I would give them a very wide berth in terms of the band and channel that they use versus the one that you use keep them on opposite sides of the chart if you possibly can the other thing I would recommend is if particularly if someone's flying with digital HD like the DJI stuff uh, because those goggles are transmitting have them stand a little bit further away from the analog pilots that helps those transmissions not kind of affect the guys that are at the field and do basic things like 
before you all start flying, figure out what channels you're all going to be on, set your stuff up and test it before you fly. You can all see a clear image in your goggles and that you can get that clearly and it's all working fine before the first pilot throws their plane in the air. And so it's heartbreaking when you're the first one to go out and then somebody powers up their kit on exactly the same band of frequency uh, and you just find that you're looking at two images which appear to be overlaid and you start panicking. That's why all of my wings and planes have iNav in it, so I have the ability to hit the ODIR switch and to initiate the return to home or a loiter, so I can just you know, tell that pilot. And if you're ever at the field with other pilots and you plug in your machine, uh, be very mindful. Hopefully, with the tips that I've gone through, you won't have the problems that I've kind of talked about but if you ever plug a model in at the field and someone else is already flying and they start to shout be ready to immediately unplug the power so that you get out of their way but hopefully this chart is going to be interesting for you again it's down there below it hopefully for those of us who are at the field with flying buddies and trying to figure out how we can get out of their way to both have a clear FPV image it'll help Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.